Oh, it's the Eagles uh, post-game show, uh, uh, Pond Hockey Eagles post-game show, live at Ocean Casino. And it is time for our Land Rover of Willow Grove Defender of the Game, presented by Jaguar Land Rover of Willow Grove. Go test drive a new Defender. You'll absolutely love it. So let's get into our Defender of the Game. Uh, all right, their defense had a different coordinator uh, tonight. Um, who stood out to you as the defender of the game, Farzi? I mean, I got to give a lot of credit to uh, Keely Ringo for being able to go out there in his first NFL start and actually hold down the fort in place of Darius Slay. I did not expect him to have the performance. I did not expect at the end of the game to be calling for more Keely Ringo, and sure enough, there we were. He was motivated back in his hometown. It was ext- extremely motivated being back in Seattle. And, and I'll just I'll, I'll say this, Dame, and I said something similar last week about Sidney Brown. Sidney Brown actually played a really good second quarter and then played a terrible third quarter where I think he missed a total of four tackles in that one quarter. But there's something I see in him that I don't see in the rest of this defense, which is at least the willingness to make a play. He's not there yet in the ability to make a play. He's at least in the right spot. The wrapping up, taking down, certainly got to work on that aspect of it. But I don't see a lot of get up and go. I don't see a lot of guys that have the same energy and boost that he has. So I'm hoping that's something that by the end of the season, if not the early portions of next year, Something that gets harnessed, because I think the Eagles could have something in him. Talk about that horrible play that he made when missing Kenneth Walker and that run for the touchdown. The run for the touchdown, and then it, one was in the backfield that he had him wrapped. Well, he had his arms around his shoulders, but that's never a good idea for the young kids at home. Uh, don't wrap at the shoulders. And then also one of the backfield where he and then Shaq Leonard missed in the backfield on the, uh, the, uh, the out route. You know what his issue is, Farzee? He, he wants to play well so bad that he plays the game with reckless abandon. And you want players like that, you know. He has to learn how to temper himself in certain situations, you know, because he's got one speed, and it's like all out all the time, you know. But I used to, you know, I used to, I used to coach my young kids. I'm like, listen, if a guy can see you, he's not going to just stand there and let you blow him up. You got to take your kill shot when he's like, when somebody else has his eyes, you know, now you take a kill shot. But if he can see you, the object is to get him on the ground. So you got to learn how to temper it. You got to learn how to slow down. There's times where you got to go at 70 miles an hour, and there's times where you got to go at 100 miles an hour. And then sometimes you got to throttle it all the way down to 65 so that your eyes, so you're sure that you see what you see before you shoot your cannon. With him, it's like I see it, I'm going to get it, 100 it all kinda, the time. Like like a guy you played with at first, Andre Waters was like that at first. Oh and yeah. Until he he had to learn it, to tone it down. You know what would have been nice if Denard Wilson was back there coaching that secondary, because <laughs> Sidney Brown, I don't know, is he getting the proper coaching on this defensive well, I, coaching I, staff? I, I think that's an issue across the board. I don't think it's just Sidney Wilson. I mean Sidney Brown that that is you know that's missing some elite level coaching. I think that, you know, some of these – some I, I believe the DB coach, this might be his first year as a defensive back coach in the National Football League, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. And so, that's what makes it so much more frustrating with this decision to go with Sean Desai because they passed over Denard Wilson, and because of that, he left. He goes to Baltimore. Well, and now you've seen the secondary take a huge step back. Of course. I mean, when the players have, have, have co-signed for him and you decide to go in a different direction, and then all of a sudden, you know, you have a coach – who can't give them the technical and fundamental fundamentals that they need, you know, that's problematic. But, you know, going back to Sidney Brown, you know, he needs someone to teach him, you know, how to temper how he plays the game. Because, you know what, Farzi, he is, he is a special player. And he's small, but he'll hit you. You know, he's just got to figure out, you know, when to go 100 miles an hour and when to, when to pare it down and understand that, you know, you're playing against – against Walker tonight, that tackle that he missed, you're playing against a guy that you probably give away 25 to 30 pounds to. Don't tackle him up high. He can't run without his legs. Take the legs and wait for everybody else to come to the party. Well, he should have known that because he played in the same damn conference uh, against Kenneth Walker. Listen, I, I, you know, I, I get it. But, you know, when you got hyper-aggressive guys that see yeah. their opportunity to seize their position, you know, that he's trying to take advantage of it. I get it. But you still got to you gotta temper yourself because the game is not always 120 miles an hour. No, I get it. it. All right, let, let's look at the remaining schedule. And, you know, I, I don't know if we reacted emotionally to say that 
my defender of the game by, my defender of the game by the way is uh keely ringo okay i want to see him right. remain as the starter for the rest of the year to see what he can be because the eagles clearly have to get younger at the corner position I worry about his speed a little bit but okay uh giants at home 4 30 christmas day do you believe that they can lose that game or they will? Cause I'm telling you, right, I, I find it hard to believe they're going to lose four straight with that team at home being the team that beats them for the fourth straight time. So I'm going to say they win that game. Uh, the question was, could they? Absolutely they, they, they could. could. Yeah, but will do, will yeah. they lose that game next week? No, they will not okay. lose that game. All right, to the all right so we're, yeah. we're good now. Yeah. We're still good. And then we go Arizona home, 1 o'clock game. Gee. Jonathan Gannon coming back. Um, I forget about who's coming back. Wait, but but real quick, I on, that, on that Eagles Giants, Eagles are ten and a half point okay, favorites. All right, all right well, there you go. All right, so crazy. let's go. Let's go to the next. One. I don't think they lose to the Arizona Cardinals because I don't think the Cardinals are a good team. But look, anything's possible. Okay, so the last game then is the game that, that nobody cares yeah. about. And if they win the out, Giants, they win the NFC East, and they get the two seed. And then they lose in the first round of the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said last week I didn't so, care about the yeah, standings. The, we, you know, I understand that they could – but um, the way I'm looking at it now, I, I find it hard to believe they're going to lose any of these remaining three games. Let me tell you something, okay? What's one of the things that the Eagles struggle with the most? You know, they struggle, they struggle with pressure on the offensive side of the ball because their mentality, as we talked about tonight, Farzee, they don't have – the site adjustment built into their offense. When you blitz them and they see it, their intent is to take the deep shot down the field. That's where they believe that they can take the shot down the field. And you want to know something. <laughs> I was guilty of this along with a lot of other people about Jonathan Gannon being as passive as he was last year. The Eagles are about to see some blitzes that they never even imagined that Jonathan Gannon has in his repertoire because he is down in Arizona right now blitzing like he's lost his damn mind. <laughs> All right. So, I go. I guess they could lose to Arizona. I, I don't oh, know. Oh, that wouldn't surprise but, me. The bottom line I'm not is, saying that they are going to lose to him. Yeah, I'm just uh, saying be prepared and be ready <laughs> because somewhere along the way there is an opportunity if, for the Eagles to, to, to lose – one more game along the way. It you're really talking is. About a, you're talking about a Cardinals team that beat the Cowboys. I mean, they have the capability yeah, I, of winning I, games. I, I get it. That's probably the only game that I guess I worry a little bit about because they're not going to lose that last game to the Giants either. So it, it all comes down to like, what their playoff success could possibly be. And as the two seed, they, I guess they could lose the first game. I, I don't know. It's a home game. Who knows? Uh, all right. Let's wrap it up. We're all stunned here. Let's say goodbye to the people who stayed up with us really late. We really appreciate it. Uh, for Mark Farzetta, Bill Calarulo, Kay Kayla Santiago, and, of course, Seth Joyner, I'm Mike Masnelli. Thanks for watching the Pondla Hockey Eagles postgame show. We'll be at it next week. Gone with the Giants. Bird. We'll see what happens. Good night, everybody. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.